Millwall Fan Show is sponsored by family business GM Motors of Gravesend and Mepham in Kent. They are Millwall fans too. They've been Honda dealers for over 50 years. At GM Motors Gravesend, you can purchase a new Honda. At both Gravesend and Mepham, they have a combined range of over 150 quality used cars and ex demonstrators to suit all budgets and lifestyles. They also offer a comprehensive range of repair and maintenance services to ensure your vehicle stays reliable, safe and retains a higher value with trust. GM Motors, Gravesend and Mepham are dear friends of the Julians family. From Lenny to Debbie and also our Millwall Fan Show. Warren here and you've joined us for the weekly Our Millwall Fan Show with the Millwall No One Likes Us Talking team which is broadcast every Friday evening. Enjoy! Welcome to the 2022-23 series of the Millwall No One Likes Us Talking Our Millwall Fan Show. I'm your host Gary Staff and with me I have the No One Likes Us Talking team of Ted Robinson, George Lampy, and Stan Godwin. Not everybody likes them, but they don't care. Right, so everybody, a bit of an indifferent couple of uh, away games there. Um, Blackpool, no, Blackburn, we lost 2 1. And Rotherham, we got a point. So that's two points on our away travels this year. Thought last night we should have maybe had all three. And Blackburn, maybe we should have nicked a draw at the end when we started to get back into it. I'll go to you, Ted. What was your thoughts on the two games? Um, well, I think you summed it up quite well there, Gal. I've got to be honest. I went, I went to Blackburn. I, I didn't think the performance was as bad as some people seem to be making out at the end. Because uh, the bottom line was, we should have come away with a draw. That's the thing with these two games. We should have come away with at least a draw at Blackburn, and we certainly should have won last night at Rotherham. So that's that's a little bit of disappointment about it. But performance wise, I, I mean, Rotherham was a lot lot better. We was more at them, if that's the right word to use. Um, and uh, let's face it, apart from the penalty, there wasn't really much more that Rotherham uh, came against us. And I think that's a lot of that may be down to Sean Hutchinson being back. Um, but we was seemed to be brighter. We seemed to have more ideas up front. Um, as I say, at Blackburn, it was only the last 10 minutes that we seemed to really get into the game. But... We gave some silly goals away. All three of these goals in the last two games were avoidable. Um, that's that's the problem at the moment. And Gary Rowe made that point um, after the Blackburn game. Yeah, we gave them two goals uh, when they really hadn't deserved two goals to uh, start on us. And then we started to play. But Rotherham, which was much better, um, you know, with a bit more luck for dear old Tom Bradshaw, he could have had a couple. Tyler Bury missed an absolute sitter. Um, but all, I mean, what can you say about a goal from Fleming? <laughs> Apart from, God, I, I mean, I, I was gobsmacked because that's a, it's been a long time since I've seen a Millwall player score a goal like that. And um, the, the, the bottom line is, you know, we had the chances to have won it at Rotherham. We didn't. We had the chances to have got a draw at Blackburn. We didn't. But at least we're getting the chances. And that bodes well for me thinking of the future, you know, we're four points off the playoffs and I think we're not far away from going on to a run that could actually take us up to them. I think we're getting that close to being that good a team. What do you think, George? Well, I mean, I, I don't think they're, they're, as, they're as bad as everybody tries to make out. These results have seemed, you know, I'd like to look at this from maybe a different point of view. Our fans seem so quick to want to jump on the on the bandwagon if we lose a game. You know, these two away games, they're not going to be easy. Blackburn, you know, are doing well at the moment. Rotherham, all right, they've only just come up, but they're not, they're okay. I don't, we just give goals away easily, don't we? Blackburn was a case in question. And I mean, Fleming's goal last night, I don't think we'll see a better Millwall goal season. So I should imagine that has been nailed on for our goal of the season. But 
I, I think there were good signs last night that we are going to come along and get better and better. And I know Ted, Ted is the eternal optimist, but I, I just think <laughs> we will actually, you know, we will get a good team. I, I, I always worry about our forwards. As everybody knows, I'm, I'm not a bigger Fobi fan, but I think we had lots of chances last night and we just plain and simply missed them, really. And it was... But, you know, I think it's promising. So, in this case, I think Ted's got a good point, actually. Well, you make a good point, George. Because Rotherham only lost on Saturday, you know. That was their first defeat. And they had a new manager in there. So, they came out a little bit all guns blazing. But we dealt with them fine, you know. So, I think some of these games are people... There's no easy games in the championship, whoever you're playing. So, uh, you know, to, to get a result yeah. there of some sort was good. And you, Stan? Well, I, I I saw the highlights of the Blackburn game uh, the other day, and and I mean we mentioned, for example, uh, the Bury miss last night, right? And we've also mentioned the goal that Fleming scored last night, brilliant goal. But then I watched him on in on the thing against Blackburn. He's standing two yards. What's it? Two, three yards. All he had to do is put his head on the ball. And then for some, he decides to try and do an overhead kick or, or raise his leg, and he ends up going over the bar. And I'm thinking, well, what's he going to do that for? So, but, you know, but that's, you know, it's small margins and all that sort of thing. But, uh, no, I, as I say, I, I, I saw it. I, last night, it was interesting, because last night, I didn't see the game on the television. I listened to it on the radio, right, Radio London. And the two commentators made the point, that from, from the moment we conceded that penalty, from then on, Millwall was in the ascendancy right throughout the game. Right? I watched the game this morning because it had been recorded for me. And, you, you know, and, and we, we played really well. And it, and, and it bore, bore out what, was, what them two blokes had said last night, that we was in the ascendancy and we and we, we done well. And... Uh, you know, and, and, and that was it. And Chris, they've got a new manager. You've always got to be wary. When this team gets in and they've got a new manager in there, they automatically raise their game because them players out there, you know, are going to be playing for their future, strange as it seems, right? But they are. And and I thought we'd done okay. And uh, and I and I agree with Ted. I think we're getting better. Uh, you know, and, and Chris, but then on Saturday, we've got Middlesbrough, innit? They ain't going to be easy, but at the moment, they ain't got a manager. Now, I would expect to win that game on Saturday. Uh, but anyway, we'll have to Saturday to take care of itself on Saturday. But no, I thought we played I thought we played well last night and uh and and I agree we was unlucky we didn't win the, we didn't win the game. I mean Fleming hit the bar, didn't he, right towards the end. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. fact he'd gone in it that'd have been two one, it'd have been game over. But but you know, but as I say, the point that George made is I mean People do get critical, and and I, in, in my opinion, now we're reaching a point now. Down at, I mean, it might be the same everywhere else, but um, you know, somebody's only got to make a mistake down at Millwall now. They missed the thing, and and they people carry on about it for days on end, right? They just, you know, and I know everyone's, you know, everyone's got high expectations and whatever, but at times it be, it it, be, it becomes ridiculous, and I think we get into a stage in football now. That with, with supporters and whether you're Mill or whatever, if you're not winning six nil every week, then you know, and then it's it's, it's chaos and and look at what's Gary, carried on recently. So sorry, Gary, what do you reckon on the change of formation then for the second game? I liked four at the back. I liked four at the back, but I've never had a problem with five at the back. But I do like four at the back. I think it's better. And oh, Stan, don't shoot me. I I do like four four two. I'm a traditionalist. I'm old fashioned wingers. Who get it down the line and cross the ball? It's the way I've always well, played. And big, I, I, big I, and I ain't gonna, sh- I ain't gonna shoot you, gal. Right, I ain't gonna shoot you. Right, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and, all, and all I'm saying, and I can understand, and, and, the, and I understand what people say about four four two. I understand it, right? Mm. But the reality is, right? The reality is, and that's why I put it on, there and I'll do it again on Saturday. If you look for, <laughs> forget the, there are very few teams now that play four four two. And it's, it's, oh, it's now beca- and it's now becoming right, and it's no good people saying, "Well, we want four four two because you've got managers now coming into the game that don't play that. They will not play that system. Now, but here's a, here's a question, we- though, Stan. Here's a question: yeah, yeah. Are they just all sheep because someone 
uh, in the Premier League, won the league with it, and they're all thinking that's the way to go. Well, I don't know. I mean, no, not really. But I mean, cast your mind back not so long ago with what, what Andy Frampton said when we had him on here, right? And he, he turned around and said, when he first started to take up coaching, right, he said, it was, he said they started looking at this back three thing, right? And, he, and his words was, he thought it was a fad. That's what he thought, right? As he said, as it's turned out, it's not a fad and, and whatever. All I'm saying is, right, 442 is 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 not is now gradually not being played. Mm. Now these managers are not doing it. They're doing it for a reason, and it's and it's at its day. Yeah. Some clubs will carry on with it, and I accept someone like George will always want 442. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, no, George wants it, the old way of five up front. That's what George yeah. was back in we the tried that last time. Oh, well, it's important. I want the Christmas tree formation. <laughs> yeah. But all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, I mean, I tell you, I watched, I watched the game on the, the the youth team game the other day, right? I'm sitting there next to Jeff. You got, you got what's his name there? Our that guy Nugent. We're not playing four four two. The only time in that game. That the ball from a goal at once in the entire ninety minutes of that game, only once did the goalkeeper do a drop kick, and it was their it was their goalkeeper once in the yeah, entire game. This this philosophy though, Stan, has come from abroad. It's quite simple. Yeah, yeah absolutely, and absolutely. They've come it come from abroad, and it goes back to the dear old Barcelona days where they fought before uh, the then. Way to play, no, the way to play football they thought was to keep the ball. And, uh, you know, yeah. I went out and watched Barcelona and you know, watched Messi in particular. Messi could have yeah. stood on the sideline for 40 yeah. minutes yeah. and done done nothing. And he did to yeah. part of the game. Yeah, he came away from the game scoring I three read, goals. Because I, read, I, read, I read a bit <coughs> the other day, George, right? In, in, uh, sorry, uh, Ted. They reckon, in 20, they reckon in 2016, right, in the premiership, in terms of managers or coaches, whatever you want to call them, right, they reckon then... They, at that particular time, we had the best coaches in Europe in the Premier League. Not one of them who was considered to be a, the best coach, not one of them was English. Not one. Right? Now, no. what I'm saying is, now all I'm getting, all, and it is, it goes back from, and, it, and it, it goes back before Barcelona, Ted. Right? English English managers and all the rest of it, they were perceived to be long ball, and, and well, we all, we all word it up. And what happened was when we got barred from Europe, we they all moved on. And when we come back, when we are five years or later, that's why we weren't getting anywhere in Europe as such. On the occasional odd win, because the the game had moved on. Now I'm not saying I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying the game moved on. Mm. And and, no, and that's look, what's the, doing the bottom now. Line is if, the, if someone comes up with a, a different formation, George mentioned the Christmas tree, there's 4-4-2. Four, four, there's all sorts of formations that yeah. you can play. But if there's one that becomes successful, yeah, right. then more often than not, people will go with it. And what what they've done, they made the pitch bigger by making it a 3-4-3, three, three, if you like to call it that, but yeah. or playing five. Yeah. They made the pitch bigger, and that gives you more space. That mm. gives you more time to play. Mm. But it also means bit, the game... But it also means the game slows down to what we used yeah. to play. Uh, and and that's, that's why it's taken so long, because fans don't particularly like. I can remember watching Italian football when it came on the Channel 4, and my mm -hmm. mate raving about it, and I said it used to bore me shitless, excuse my language, yeah, yeah. because no, all no. they was concentrating on was keeping the ball and yeah, then yeah. hopefully nicking a 1-0 win. Well, that I mean, ain't what English big, people like as football. The, no, but the biggest change, but the biggest change in football, Ted. See, when you talk about what's the biggest change in football, people will turn around and say the coming of the Premier League. People will turn around and say, "Oh well, the re the redesigning of the European Cup to the Champions League." But the biggest change to football is not them. The biggest change to football was when they outlawed the back pass because then they everybody then. Right, had to move it as we now play it. That was the biggest single change. Leeds United were the last team to win the old first division and they played it long ball. And Lukic was their goalkeeper and he used to pump it down front and he used to get near the box. When the back pass rule come in and he couldn't do that no more, you know, pick it up from a back pass and lump it up, he then had to kick, he had to do it from the ground and it was falling 20 feet short. 
That's the biggest single change to football, Ted, the change of the back pass rule. Right. Well, on Believe that note, me. we are going to make take a break um, and we'll be ready for our first guest. Hey. But before that, we will listen to the dulcet tones of Bethany Warren. Hi, Bethany here. Want a match day programme? You'll find them with sellers outside the ground by the gates at Zampa Road, Stockholm Road and Senegal Road. They cost a pound and the sellers ask if you can have the right money, as change will be difficult. If you want to get a message, photos of special events, memorials or just ones for good luck to be included, email smprogram at protonmail.com. That is S-M-P-R-O-G-R-A. M M E at P R O T O N M A I L dot com. It's a great read. I'm Gary Staff, and with me, I have the No One Likes a team of Ted Robinson, George Lampy, and Stan Godwin. Don't forget, have your pound con ready or buy five for a fiver. Our first guest tonight was a Hammersmith born player who started his playing career at Wembley. Not between the Twin Towers, but in the Isman League, Wembley, before becoming a professional player at Leighton Orient in 1984. Roll forward to 1994, and a further five clubs later, he joined the Lions on a £135,000 transfer. He scored six goals in 27 appearances and kept the bench warm on a five further occasions. He was released in 1997, and then it went across the sea to Ireland to play for Shelbourne. A year later, he hung up his boot at Gloucester City, I hear Jeff Burnage um, shout it. Richard Cadet, welcome, Hello. Richard. Thank you. Hello, Richard. Hello. Hi, Richard. Thank you. Hi, Richard. Evening, Richard. Hello, hi. Evening. Good evening, all. Before I let you off, um, uh, Richard, the rise of pro football from Isman League, were you surprised? Um, not, uh, I don't know. If you say not really, that sounds big headed, doesn't it? <laughs> well, um, you can. No, <laughs> well, no it was, I, was, I, I wasn't surprised, no. Um, I was playing. I was, I was. I was playing really well. I was only young, and I was. I was playing in the man's team, and sort of like I was really sort that like a sore thumb, really. So, and there was and there was lots of talks about different clubs coming in, but for me at the time, Brentford, Brentford one of them, and other clubs are meant to be looking at me. And later on, took a shot on me. Hello, um, Richard George here. Hi. Hi, George. I always, lo- I always like to ask this question. What was it like when you arrived at the den from Falkirk, wasn't it, if I remember rightly? And and what was your first impressions of the place? <coughs> of the new den or the, or the training facilities? Or... <laughs> I, I, I think the old lot, really. I, you know, the old shebang uh, compared to where you, you know, came yeah. from, really, I suppose. I mean, obviously, la- the last time I played at the den, they were still at, um, they were still at the old den. So... Yeah, Lovely place, Richard. Yeah, great place. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely great place. Great place to go to <laughs> as, a, as a as a as a way as a way team. Yeah, great. Lovely. Um, always so a welcome. Always lovely welcome. <laughs> so obviously, so obviously, the new ground was like really nice. You know, at the time, it was it was new, wasn't it? So it was really nice. Yeah. Um, when I when I arranged at the training ground, I, you know, I I was a little bit surprised the amount of players there was at the club. There's so many players. I was trying to work out because I was I was I was sort of like waiting to get my medical and that. So I was waiting and watching the guys train. I couldn't work out how many teams there were. I was like, it seems to be like four or five teams. What's going on here? So I worked out the youth team, worked out the reserve team, worked out there must be the first team. And then there was another squad. And then I said, Oh, those are the injured players. I was like, there was it's about a squad of twenty two injured players. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Nothing's changed, Richard. It's like that. <laughs> uh, it's a Millwall trait, that is. Yeah, I don't know. It's the biggest squad of injured players I've ever seen in my life. I was like, whoa. Nightmare. I reduced yeah. Ted here, mate. All right. Hi, Ted. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, not bad. There, there were some characters in them side, that side you was with, though, Richard, weren't there? We had uh, Tony Witter on the other week and uh, yeah. also Mark Beard a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, tell me about them and who, who were the main characters as you saw them in that team? Well, I think there was, I mean, it was, it, it was, it was, it was, it was um, a bit, we had, we, had a, we had quite a young team and we had quite players in there like, 28s, 29s, and a couple in their 30s at the time, you know. So we had really had a good mixture. So everyone, everyone was sort of like their own characters, really. You know, we had Rhino, we had Ben Thatcher, uh, we, uh, 
uh, Andy Roberts. Everyone was different. Casey, Casey and Gold, Casey Keller. Uh, was Alex Ray. So there was there was quite a few characters to be honest. You know, there's quite a few characters in the in the actual squad. So it was it wasn't it, it was it was it was all right. It was it was it was good. It was a laugh. You name yeah. me them. I bet you got kicked in training, didn't you? Yeah, I think everyone got kicked in training. Did <laughs> <laughs> you try and get on the same team as Alex Rain training? <laughs> no, we were, we were funny enough. We were, uh, we, whenever, whenever there was a five aside, side, it used to be olders versus youngers. I can't remember it. I think Alec must have been on the young side. He might, he might have still just been in his 20s or whatever. So he made the young team. But yeah, they weren't, there wasn't nothing, you know, there was nothing held back at the um, five aside. No, no, none of that. It weren't one for the faint hearted, no. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it was, yeah, it was, yeah. Lively oh, time. Stand here, mate. I understand. How are you? Yeah, all right. I'm okay. It's great to speak to you again. Despite how long you were with us on your first appearances were limited. Yeah. Can you let the fans know the background to that fact? Or yeah. Well, I've, yeah, I just got injured. I got injured. I so, started really so what well. Was... I started well when I came down on loan. Started really well, and I picked up a knee injury. I think just just after the we played Arsenal in the FA Cup. Didn't we play last in the FA Cup and we drew 0 0 or 1 1? I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we beat them 2 0 over Ivory, didn't we? We, we won 2 0 at Ivory. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what Can I you just say that one again, that. Rich? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we won 2 0 over at Ivory. <laughs> uh, oh, that always makes me laugh. Yeah. Uh, never mind. Yeah, I got injured and it, it turned out that I had to have a knee operation and that, and that really put me back a bit. And then I just really didn't, didn't see eye to eye with McCarthy. Really, did see I tried McCarthy, and that was it. Really, With, but know. did he sign you, though, Richard? Was it he McCarthy? Signed, he, he signed me. Yes, yeah. So what he went did. wrong, if you don't mind me asking? Just characters, or yeah, different sort of different sort of opinion, or you know, different sort of opinion. You know, he's he's a manager. He's entitled to speak what he wants, and um, and I'm a human being, and I always think what I want to think. So oh. yeah, there was no. There was no, there was no love lost between us. So you know, and then obviously he moved on, and then Nickel, Nickel came, and well, that's uh, less said about Jimmy as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you about him, but maybe yeah, not. We'll not. Skip over that, Rich. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, Richard. The list said says it all. Yeah, I think <laughs> well, I, come on, come on. Let's get an inside view. Why was he so bad? Just say it in one word. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you can't listen. He, he had his way of he had his way of thinking. Hey, we need to play. Uh, it didn't work out. Really, that's it in a nutshell. Really, you know, all managers, all managers will want to play the way they want to play. Pick the players they want to pick. That's their, you know, that's their prerogative, isn't it? You know, but if if it doesn't work out, then you have got to take what comes your way, didn't you? And really, that's that's no, what really yeah. yeah. That's when when you're a player, Rich, when you're a player and you can see that it's not working for a manager, mm. yeah, do players go to that manager and say, you know, governor, this 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 system ain't working, or, or do players just keep quiet, or you know, do his, if you put your head well, above the parapet, you get in trouble, sort of thing. That's what you've done with Rick uh, McCarthy. He went and said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I've, I've, look, I've always, I've always been look. I've always been a, I've always been a player that I said what I think I said what I thought. So yeah. whether whether the manager liked it or not, I said what I thought. Yeah, yeah. and and that's and that's who I was. Most no most mm-hmm. players don't most players don't they just they just keep going and normally at the end of the day the manager gets a tic tac doesn't he? So it, yeah. you know it, yeah. he's a, he's the one he's one who t- he's the one who, who who gets the bullet doesn't he? So. Yeah. There, there, yeah, there's one player right. I, that was in that team. You're talking about the Ivory game and that and Richard Brown yeah. and you was. I like it because I thought he was a terrific player. And we don't speak much about him. That's Jason Van Blerk. I, I thought he was a mm. terrific left back. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, at the time, obviously, because Ben was playing in front of him, but yeah. he, he could yeah. play, he could play left left back or left side of midfield. And when he and when he came in, he, he, Jason was Jason was a good player. I, I thought he was I thought he was a good player as well. I didn't think he was. I didn't think he let anyone down. I thought he was a good player. Yeah, yeah. I thought Jason. Yeah, I thought yeah, he didn't let anyone down. Jason was a good player. There were you know the squad had a good you know, you know there's, there, we had good players in the squad to be honest. It was who, it who were your player. standout players at the time, Rich? You know, in that squad, uh, you, who who sort of impressed you out of all the guys? Well, um, 
uh, obviously, uh, you know, Mark, Mark was a good player. Mark Candy was a good player. Uh, yeah. Young Dave, Sav- young Dave Savage on the right hand on the right hand side. But the player I thought, who, who I thought was a good player, and, and I thought he'd have gone on and done a lot, a lot, a lot better would have been, was Andy Roberts. Uh, was it Andy, yeah. Yeah, Andy, 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 Andy Roberts yeah. in midfield? Good player. Yeah, I, thought, yeah. I thought I just thought he was a good player. I really thought he was a good player, and I thought he, I thought he would have gone on. He played Premier know. League though in Wimbledon, didn't he? Yeah, but I thought, yeah, I thought, was, Palace. You know, didn't, no, yeah. you know, yeah, no disrespect. I thought he was better than that. I think if he, I think if he'd gone to a, if he gone to another club, he would have. Um, yeah, I think he would have. He, he played in that under McCarthy. He played in that strange little bit in the middle, didn't he? It was quite a, you he, know, yeah, it's time it, a bit, wasn't it, Rich? He, well, he, where he no, played. he played. He played. He played centre mid for him and Alex was to Alex, him and Alex yeah. played centre mid. You know, yeah. and you know, sort of like complimenting each other, two different players. But I, yeah. I really thought Andy Roberts was a good player. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Richard. When Mark Kennedy scored that second goal at Arsenal, I thought he was the greatest player that ever lived. When he <laughs> went out in the top goal, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a quality player, though. I mean, Liverpool bought he him, was. didn't they? So you know, yeah, he, yeah, Liverpool bought big money. Didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Liverpool, bought, Liverpool bought him for big money. Just don't know what happened, really. You know, you thought he'd have gone there. And, I thought he'd have gone there and taken off, to be honest. But it's football, he's a manager now, isn't he? Is he managing now, Mark? Yeah, he's, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, he's a manager now. He, I think he's managing down in the uh, the second division. I think I can tell and, you. I just uh, googled it, Stan. It's Lincoln City. Lincoln, oh, yeah. That's oh, it. yeah. Oh, he's got he's got he's manager of Lincoln. Oh, well done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, but, so, did I mean, you think he was manager material, Richard? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you want? Do you want to think about that answer, Richard? <laughs> no, no, no. He's, he's, look, he's looking for an assistant, Richard. So you might want to think about that answer again. <laughs> no, I didn't know because he, 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 you know, if you said to me Kenny Cunningham, I'd gone, yeah, that would, wouldn't surprise yeah. me. Mm. Yeah, I missed that. Kenny, I thought Kenny was a good player as well. Kenny was a very good player. Yeah, as well. Kenny, yeah Kenny. his current record as a manager is five. Five and four, so that's five wins, five draws, four four defeats. Okay, but he's only so been he's, there since May, so I say he's only, he's just only just taken yeah. over, yeah. Yeah, okay. and he was yeah. he had a couple of months at Macclesfield, but didn't go too well there. He had only had one win and eight losses, but that was back in 2020, yeah. 2020. So he's been given a chance at Lincoln. So fingers crossed for the lad. Yeah, fingers crossed. I hope he does. I'll be looking out for the results now. Now yeah. he's down there. Yeah, I hope yeah, he does. Well. I hope he does. I hope he does well. Yeah, I think he keep, I think he keeps I mean I also think he keeps a low profile anyway because I mean I watch you know the the football league results mm. on the, on the Saturday night yeah. and and I just you know you, you say like you didn't know he was a mate of you and you didn't know he was a mm. manager and and, and yeah. I think and I got an idea didn't we ask him to come on this show and he was a bit reluctant to do that and I think that was part of the reason because I just think he just wants to Keep a well, low profile at the moment, and it, don't you know, don't stand out in case it all goes a bit pear shaped. I suppose. But, I don't but, know. But Mark, Mark wasn't like he wasn't he wasn't like that as a um, as a player. He wasn't he wasn't flashy uh, or anything like that. He was he was just he was just he was pretty quiet to be honest, Mark. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't he wasn't you know he wasn't a loud mouth or anything like that. He was just he, he was a nice young mm. guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what yeah. about yourself, Richard? You still involved with football at all? Yeah. Or? No, no, no. After, after no, I did the, I did the under seventeen. Would you like to be? War. No, not really. No, no. I got, I got, I got too much going on the weekends <laughs> during the week. I've just got too much going on. Uh, Maybe yeah, you could be time. an assistant during the week, Rich, and not yeah. <laughs> yeah, not not get involved at the weekends. <laughs> did no, you enjoy your time I, in the youth team? With the I did. Under I did. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah, it's good seeing it's good seeing younger players coming up, and especially when they yeah. make it. You know, I had Marvin Elliott in my team. Oh, did you? Obviously, when yeah, Marvin was yeah, Marvin was in my team. Good player, Marvin. Marvin. Good yeah, player. went on. You know, went on to have a, you know good career, Marvin. So yeah, Bristol City. Yeah, Bristol City. Yeah, yeah. Millwall, mm. Bristol City. Yeah. So I, yeah, I just the, felt sorry for him in the cup final when he had to play it right back. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Bless it was. Him. Yeah, so it was, could have been worse. He could have been left back and had Ronaldo to mark. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they got they, they got to an FA Cup final, which is brilliant. They did. You know? They did. Which is because brilliant. You say you get to an FA Cup final as a footballer, then yeah, it's nice. Oh, a dream, an absolute dream. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. 
Okay, Richard, I'll right. let you get on. Um, great to speak with you again. It's been a pleasure for us. Um, and we'll get you back on the end of the season and we can talk more about how the season's gone with the club, etc. Yeah. But we can't let you go without a prediction for this weekend against Borough. But, oh, they're not doing well. Neither are they. Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough really. They've just sat in the match, haven't they? Yes, they, they have. Chris Bowley, yeah. yeah. Mm. Is, it, is it home or away? Home. Home. Uh, whenever, they, whenever they get a new manager, they, they, everyone gets a little bit clever, don't they? And sort of like, they, do, yeah. in, don't they? Yeah. Well, they won last night. So that's like I think. So hopefully that's out of the way now. Yeah, no, no, they, they guys are free. Especially if they win, they want to go, they want to keep them, you know, because everyone's up for grabs. All the places are up for grabs. I would say a 2 1. 2 1 to Millwall. 2 1 from Millwall. We take that. Yeah, yeah. we take that, mate. Yeah. yeah. Thank Enjoy you, your weekend, Richard. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you're up to. <laughs> Cheers, Richard. Cheers, Enjoy Rich. your evening. Cheers, take care, mate. Cheers, Richard. Bye-bye. Cheers, Richard. Bye-bye. Cheers, Cheers. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. We'll take a break there and listen to Debbie Julians and Harvey Brown talking about the Lions Food Hub. Let's hear from Harvey Brown. Have you heard of the Lions Food Hub? That little lioness, Kelly Webster, is involved. Don't forget to help the Lions Food Hub if you can. Thank you. As Harvey said, they need your support. If you can help and you can make a one-off or a regular monetary donation at Banquet, that is B-A-N-K-U-E-T, you will find them online. Insert www.banquet.co.uk forward slash Lions Food Hub into your browser. I'll say that again. www.banquet.co.uk forward slash Lions Food Hub. And the Lions Food Hub is all one word. On match days, you can make food and toiletry donations at the Lions Food Hub, which is opposite the 1885 bar at the Cold Blow Lane end of the ground. Alternatively, you can also contact the team via the Lions Food Hub Twitter or Facebook sites. I'm Gary Staff and with me I have the No One Likes a Talking team of Ted Robinson, George Lampy, and Stan Godwin. Energy and food poverty is rising beyond our wildest dreams from 12 months ago and will not decrease but increase again. However, your kindness will be much appreciated and lessen the burden on the many families at risk. Let's hear from Ellis Barr, who we love to see in her videos. Keep up the good work, Ellis. Ellis here. Thank you for watching my videos. Now to hear what the middle line S's and Romans have been up to. And to hear who is next up for Gary Rowick and the Lions. Come on, Mero. Thanks, Ellis. And Paul Loding from the Mill Romans and Pride filed this report. Hi, all. It's Paul Loading from the Millwall Romans, Hello. just to give you a, a quick update. Millwall Pride were on a break this week, but the Romans team uh, travelled to Charlton, uh, big, obviously, rivals of ours, in the GFSN Cup. The GFSN Cup, we've had a few, uh, you know, we've got through to the, to the semis last year, losing to Village Manchester FC. Year before, we we actually uh, faced them in the final and lost on penalties. So, we've really really got a point to prove. It was a it was a real uh, battle of a game, um, yeah, a real battle of a of a cup final. It wasn't our best performance. We we ended up playing a lot more direct than we wanted to. The passing just wasn't there, but we did manage to uh, secure a two one victory. So on to the next round, which we're playing on the 12th of November. That's being held at a neutral venue in Milton Keynes. We will be facing either Nottingham Lions or the Village Manchester again um, in the quarterfinals. Which, okay, will be held in uh, Milton Keynes on the 12th of November. It's a big game for, uh, for Millwall on Saturday uh, against Borough. Millwall really need to start picking up some points. So uh, I'm going to say a, a healthy 2-0 win. I think we'd all like that. Our co- friend and colleague, Jeff Burnage, also filed a report following the Lionesses game at the weekend. This is Jeff Burnage reporting for Millwall Lionesses. Uh, the Lionesses had a sensational 9-0 victory in the uh, second round of the FA Women's Cup at Bromley FC Women on Sunday. 
A vocal and appreciative crowd of 669 witnessed a classic local derby and Bromley themselves had plenty of the tie despite the 9-0 scoreline. It is a reflection of the growing interest in women's football that the match attracted such a large and such a brilliant crowd and atmosphere. These Millwall Lionesses provide a great spectacle. There was anxiety among Millwall fans because of the absence of three key players, but a strong first half blitz of seven goals showed the quality of their finishing. There were too many goals to describe in detail, but hat tricks from Otisha Charles and Angel Reed stood out, Gemma Bryan scored two herself, and Millie Connell the other. Lauren Williams was making her debut at right back, Jazz August excelled in switching to centre midfield due to the absence of skipper Sophie Chapman and there was the usual excellent performance from Millie Connell. The next round of the FA Women's Cup is on October the 23rd. Thanks Jeff. Ted, what do you make of the Lions' start to the season? Well, to be honest, it's been nothing short of sensational, isn't it? I think... uh, we all realised that there was a young team, uh, you know, quite a few youngsters being sort of uh, put into the team for the first time this season, and and they, they've responded remarkably well. They they seem to be going from strength to strength, and that's what in young players when they have the confidence and that confidence grows is what you tend to see the results coming through like that. I mean, nine nil in any game is exceptional, but to have it and do it in the FA. Women's Cup is, uh, is 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 brilliant, and let's hope it, it continues. It, it bodes well for them for this season because, as I say, they've got so many young girls going in there, and uh, it, let's hope they go from strength to strength. Indeed, indeed, George, what do you make about the Romans and the prior start this season so far? Well, I I I, I recently spoke to Paul, um, the ma- you know the manager of. of uh, when we were at, down at the uh, Millwall Community Trust. I mean, I, I've just, you know, I've watched the progress that the Romans have made coming to the club, you know, coming into Millwall, and it must have been a pretty hard thing for them to do. And then Pride coming along, and, and they, it just seems to be working so well. And, um, and and Paul was telling me that they're getting so many more players that want to join them now that, uh, you know, I think it's been a real progression that the Millwall as a football club, can be really proud of that these, these you know, people, the people want to come and, and belong to the club. Now it's established. And, I you know, I think we all deserve a lot of credit. And, um, and, and Paul's running of it always is really good. I, I see these guys going from strength to strength, actually. So I, I'm very impressed. And Stan, uh, you was at the under-23 games on Monday. Uh, what was that like? Oh, it was quite good. It was quite good, to be fair. I mean, Bristol City in the, in the, in the first half managed to get a, a, a guy sent off. Uh, he got the two yellow cards. But no, it, it, it's quite good. It's a different type of game, uh, clearly. But, you know, all I would say, and it's, this is the thing, all them players that played in that game, both sides, they had potential, right? And because, you know, in, 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 but... but the reality is that some of them players on on and not, not just in nine games but other under twenty one team, they're not going to make it through to the, uh, you know, they're not going to go much further, you know, because that's just the way it is. But no, it was quite good. But you know, but you but you can when you're watching them as as good as they are, you think what they need to do, in my opinion, is if they can, is at some point to go out and loan, but at least go out and loan to start off with say in in the non-league say the national league like like when what's his name did uh he went to sutton uh that's what they do because you know it's the, i can't see one of them players coming from there and then uh getting into the first team albeit because the, the gap in quality is too big in my opinion you might you I mean all right the guy might get on for five minutes towards the end but there is a big gap there uh and you, you know, say when you when you when you hear these stories, when like we had that guy scoring all them goals, and people were saying we'll bring him back from loan from Sutton and put him in the first team, you talk about jumping two divisions, or mm. or three in, in in to start off with. It's a big, you know, the gap is getting bigger and bigger. But so no, it was it was quite an enjoyable game, and you know, and 
And and because now they're playing them at the den, whereas before they were playing them down at uh, the training ground. And because when they was down at the training ground, they wouldn't let people in, but they now do it at the den. No, I enjoyed it, so I should look forward to the next game at home. Wonderful. Uh, next up for the Lions is Middlesbrough at the den. Uh, as we found out earlier, Middlesbrough have recently parted company with Mr. Chris Wilder uh, following a poor start to the season. Um which saw them at the time of his demise sitting third from bottom. I think they won on they did win one 0 on Wednesday night. Not sure against, and that's jumped them up just be, just below us. I think. Um, I don't believe a new manager has been found yet. Anyone prove me wrong on that? But um, so, guys, quick fire. How do you think we will fare against the Borough this weekend? Ted, I'll start with you. Uh, as we, I've said earlier that every game's a tricky game and none more so than when there's a side without a manager in my opinion because uh, it could well be that they might have their future manager sitting up in the stand watching them and Borough are not a bad side when you look at their players and the, the, the team that they've got I don't know what went wrong with Chris Wilder because I'm sure at the beginning of the season everybody would have been predicting them to be in the playoffs at least with Chris Wilder at the end but not worked out um, we've, I, we've, we are obviously having the two away games. We haven't won a game, so we do need a win. But I'm, I'm just so confident that we're beginning to get into this season and beginning to play well. Um, and Fleming must take confidence from the goal that he scored. Bradshaw just needs a goal, I think, and he might have one of these little runs. Um, be interesting to see how Gary Rowett goes with what uh, formation, because at the end of the day, three of the backs done us very well at home. So far this season, we've got a good home record at this moment in time. But whether he sticks with a back four, but I, I, I'm quietly confident. And I think I actually, I like Richard's score. I, I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to the Lions. Fair enough. I'll go to you next, George. Um, well, I, I'm really surprised Middlesbrough got rid of Wilder because I, I think he's one of the best managers in the championship. And I'm... I, I'm really quite amazed. All right, they were down the bottom, but they obviously haven't given him a great deal of time. Um, I, I'm I'm one of these times when I'm going along with Ted, which is very rare. I, I'm I'm quite word. confident well for our team, and <laughs> and I tell you what, we may have all missed. Well, we you know I'm sure we haven't missed it, but we've actually got ourselves a real free kick specialist in Fleming, haven't we? I mean, yes. he is going to score about five goals out of every ten at the rate he's going when it comes to free kicks. He's he's there or thereabouts every single time, you know. Um, so I think we've got a, a bright future and a bright boy there. So I'm going to go, um, I'm going to beat Ted on this occasion. I'm going to go at least two or three nil to the Lions, actually. Oh, blimey. Here's a question. I was thinking about this in the week. I can't remember this. When was the last time we had a penalty? Benicophobia at Birmingham. Last year? Yeah, I think. That's the last one I remember. He, he rolled it in right at the last knock into the game, didn't he? Um, I can't mm. think of one this season. Have we had one? No. No, we haven't. No, Early I can't. Days, I can't yeah, give it about 25 games, won't you? Yeah, well, uh, to the manager, feel, so, someone feels sorry for us. <laughs> Stan, what are your thoughts? <laughs> What about Middlesbrough? Well, yeah. I again, I'm surprised about that they've uh, they've got rid of Chris Wilder because for, for me, he's a, a top top manager, and for one reason or the other at Borough, it's not worked out. And uh, you know, this was a guy that when he first went to Sheffield United, and I didn't know he was a Sheffield United supporter when he was a kid and growing up. When he first went there, the chef, the Sheffield United fans didn't think he was good enough. The club was too big for him because of his because he'd made his name in the non-league. They got promoted at the end of that season with record points. They was in the championship two divisions and he got them to the, uh, you know, the uh, the Premier League. And, you know, and then it all, they did well. To, I mean, they could have made Europe, right? And good managers, good managers, they don't get there by luck, right? And all that, a little bit went away and, and then it all went wrong last season. But I'm surprised because Chris Gibson, who's the, who's the, or Steve Gibson rather, who's the chairman of Middlesbrough. He's not normally known for wanting to start, you know, not giving people. He's always back to managers and one thing and another. So it was a bit of a shock when I found out he'd gone, I must admit. I uh, heard a rumour that was the problem. They didn't get on. Ah, uh, well, I mean, that well would be right. But uh, but I'm but i I'm confident. I, I mean, I agree with Ted. I'm confident that uh, we can win on Saturday. I mean, it's not going to be easy. Prediction? Uh, 
I think we can win. I think we can win by the odd goal. 1-0 or 2-1, something like that. I can't disagree with anything you're saying. I'm going to go 2-0. I think we've, we're owed a clean sheet. We haven't had one for so long, um, considering what Bart was doing and this, uh, our clean sheets in the past. Um, thankfully, I'm glad it's the second game uh, after he's been sacked. So hopefully that run of bounce after the manager gets sacked will have stopped. Um and I think we're going to win 2 0, as I say. So, um, we'll take a break there and listen to the fantastic fanatics and how they can help you and help ourselves going forward. Hi, I'm Richard Gordon, and I'd like to invite you to become a fantastic fanatic. Fantastic Fanatics is a great way to raise funds for your sports club. Sign up today, find your club, and securely register your everyday debit and credit cards. Every time you spend with our retail partners, they pay a percentage back to your club. It costs you nothing, and you can win cash prizes along the way. Visit fantasticfanatics.com and help your club be the best it can be. I'm Gary Staff, and with me, I have the No One Likes Us talking team of Ted Robinson, George Lampy, and Stan Godman. With Christmas, just a mere... 79 days, I think it was today. Oh, a, way, a why not spend on presents through Fantastic Fanatic site and give a bonus to the Mill Community Trust. It will help them deliver such activities as school holidays, camps and walking football sports for the over 50s and their latest offerings. If you're aged between 16 to 24 and currently out of education or unemployed, you can join Mill's Second Chance Academy. The programme allows footballers and those wishing to work in the professional football industry to come in to Mill and learn, train and coach like a professional while also being educated. Our last guest this evening is a local Mill fan for more years than he can actually remember. He's a DJ on Love the Beat Radio, uh, online radio I should say, where he is known as the Indie Rock Man. Let's welcome Ozzy Osman to the studio. Thank you very much. Hello Ozzy. Maybe those. Nice to be here. Yeah. Hi, Ozzy. Right. We've Hi, been yeah. asked about access to Mill for people with disabilities, and I know that includes you, Ozzy. Can you yeah. share your experience with that to the listeners, please? Um, I actually think uh, the the amount of venues I've been to uh, in the last few years, um, that Mill's got one of the best access um, accessible um, stadiums going because not only that we've got the best area to seat to sit um along the uh barry kitchener stand uh we're, we're undercover you know and there's a lovely there's some lovely warm uh air cons uh sticking <laughs> out the walls that, that feed us a little bit of heat every now and then uh but uh yeah i mean i i actually think that uh that Millwall's ground is is one of the best um, accessible stadiums. I mean, I've, I've been to Wembley, I've been to um, uh, Sellers Park, I've been to uh, Hammersmith Odeon, and I've been to West Ham's ground, um, and it's 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 just it, to to me. I, I'm not being biased, seriously though. It, it, it is one of the best if the, if the lifts are working because <laughs> we've had <laughs> issues we have had issues uh, luckily there's always been one or the other uh, working so and also Shona does a fantastic job uh, the disability liaison officer she, she, she's brilliant um, she's always there for you if, if you've got any problems um, and um I will say one thing, and I'm sorry to say this. Sometimes, if you get there a bit late, your seat is taken. It's gone. And you have to sort of uh, sort of ask politely if they can move. And it's not easy asking another wheelchair user to move. Uh, you do feel a bit embarrassed. But uh, no, other than that, it's fantastic. 
Well, that, that, that's good to hear, Ozzy. It's, it's Teddy, Ozzy. Oh, by the way, I think that was Steve Kavner on the phone there. I just wanted to make sure you were uh, <laughs> saying how good the facilities were. For, yeah, now yeah. he's heard about that, he's going to charge you more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> let's get back to our beloved Lions, mate. Well, what do you reckon of our season so far? I mean, we've all sort of discussed it, and I think everybody's a little bit frustrated, and I do believe we're a better team than the results have, uh, have shown. What, what, what do you reckon? It's, it's to me. It is what it's, it's nothing we haven't seen uh, a few seasons. You know, I mean, I mean, we've always gone through periods like that. And to me, yeah, you know, we we can we can. It is so frustrating. But this season in particular, where we've had the new signings, I think people have just got to calm down, let them really get settled. I mean. I don't think Gary Rout has um, been out of settle for a, his, his first eleven yet. Uh, too, too many changes at the moment for me. Um, like the other night, six changes was yeah. just too much. He's he's got to be strong and stick with a stick with a team that he knows will get us results. Um, and I, I, believe, I agree. I agree. Actually, yeah. I do. I, I, I think I think the frustration for all of us is that we can see that the potential's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Zion Fleming or Zion Fleming, sorry. Um, he, I, I just think he's, he's a great player, uh, and, and Styles has come on re- re- really good. Um, and uh, you know, it's yeah. People want to see Tyler Bury on more, more, and I, I I tend to agree with that. I do think. Malone has copped some unfair criticism sometimes because, yeah, as that. you know, I agree. Yeah, in in in, in the past, he, he can just show a flash of brilliance, and he can again have a bad game, but it takes two seconds, doesn't it? You know, yeah. of a flash of brilliance, and he, he he's got that. Obviously, I think he's, he's got, got more assists than anyone in the team at the moment, isn't he? But he's obviously the worst yeah, player in the team. But for some yeah. reason, he's only set up about four or five of our goals this season. Yeah, I forget that. Yeah, that's right. Well, he's he's that's crossing right. the last knockings at Swansea. It got us a draw. Yeah, yeah, that's and it. it was with his wrong foot, I think. <laughs> hello, was it? It's George yeah, here. I mean, hello, George. Sorry, um, can I just ask you, um, just a fan's question, really? Can you tell us your most memorable uh, Millwall game since you have followed us, and and tell us why? Um. Well, when I was thinking about this, I I found it very easy to choose. I mean, I cried when they came out of the old Wembley Tunnel, you know. Um, All right. The, 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 yeah, the the win at the new Wembley. But to me, I think my most memorable moment was two thousand and two, uh, and the comeback goal from Neil Harris. All I right. I think, yeah. I, I, I was behind the goal at, at Watford, uh, and the fact that we, when me and my mate drove up there, we, you know, the obvious thing, none of the pubs were open for us, um, so we had a cup of tea at McDonald's, and we met, met up with with our Watford Stroke Palace fans, who, who who's my mate, uh, who lived in Crofton Park for a long time. Um, and we met up with him. He went to his end, and we went to uh, our end. And the three-one win. And, and, and when Harris came on and got that goal, and they lifted him up on his shoulders, the iconic yeah. moment. For me, that That's that right. was just that was just for me. And I've I've just ordered a a a, a, a photo of that in a frame. Uh, that, oh, that's right. going up on my road gallery. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that that to me that to me is is the one. When As you, you said, say, you it's an iconic moment, and it, yeah, yeah. When you yes. said you cried, I was at Wembley. I thought I cried at most Millwall games thinking about it, but nothing <laughs> to do with Wembley. Uh, <laughs> no, it was just it, it was just went walking out of the old Wembley. I thought I'd never see that in my lifetime. Yeah, and yeah. I, and and then there, there, there was something else I remember from that day: a fan just coming out of, just coming up to his part of where he's going to sit he just flung his arms open 
and went, ah, like that. And it, it looked like he was in tears just coming into the, you know, it was such a great day up until they got the winner. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. but uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's just things like that. Yeah, Keith, it's Stan here, mate. Uh, what I'm interested in, what was your thought about the players that Gary Rowitz brought in during his transfer window? And do you think he will be uh, keen to get a couple more in in, in uh, the January window? Is that to me, yeah, Keith? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, I think, you know, it's exciting. When when I saw the, the 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 players come in, I was glad a phobie signed again. Uh, I've looked on YouTube for Zion Fleming and Volkshammer. Um George Honeyman was it was an exciting signing. Um, but again, if 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 it would be nice, probably. To have got one more more experienced, um, say, say a striker, um, you know, whether we can do something in January, I don't know. But there's like, there's there, are, we, sh- we should have had a we should have had a, a had a look at those those players that haven't got clubs at the moment. Um, I was I was a bit gutted when Snodgrass signed for whoever he's gone to now because he had no club I mean he, he would have been a good for us just to have on the bench yeah it's good know? Plan. yeah um, and you know there's, there's various others but um, yeah I mean if if anything another striker might might, might be good in January yeah um, I agree thanks for joining us Ozzy um, and we keep listening to the sounds of uh, love the beat radio. Uh, yeah, what, love just the beat. Talk, what's that all about? We've got to ask the question. Well, what's the, that all the, about? the name, the name, love the beat radio. Yeah, and what's because, what's your part in it? Because it was it was my part in it is that I do a show on a Monday called the Indie Rock Jam, uh, where I obviously play a lot of rock and indie, uh, punk, ska, ska punk, uh, uh, post punk. Um, basically everything guitar, some acoustic stuff, uh, stuff that you wouldn't normally hear on other stations, you know. And uh, I've also got a new show starting, if I can plug it. Of course you can. <laughs> uh, it's on a Tuesday between four and six. And this is where I get to play uh, my other love, love of Northern Soul and Scar. Uh, so I've called, I've called it the uh, Shuffle and Skank, and that starts on Tuesday between four o'clock and six o'clock on Love the Beat Radio. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to playing some of those, dusting off some of those old tunes. Uh, is it is it music and chat? Um, sometimes I mean on on the rock, indie rock jam, I will be chatting to uh, some some musicians on their album releases and uh like i've got i've got a chat coming up with spirit destiny kirk brandon uh i've got a chat coming up with uh chisholm from a, a band called feather trade uh and the other 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 bands you know if if i can um put tuck uh if i can have a word with my my mate who's a manager of all all these bands uh the ruts professionals who are two two x sex pistols um members uh and the ruts like i said and hopefully emf as well they're they're, they're a band in the 90s yeah they had a big well. hit unbelievable yeah and uh they've, they've just got back touring so yeah there's there's all sorts coming up yeah Excellent. so Sounds good, but if it ain't Frank and Archer, Jules don't know anything, mate. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, we look forward to hearing from you again, um, Ozzy, and getting you back on the show towards the end yes. of the season. Brilliant. Thanks for your time. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you. Cheers, Ozzy. Cheers, Ozzy. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
we'll take a break there and listen to Bethany Warren talking about the Mural Community Trust. The work of the Millwall Community Trust makes a big difference for people in Lewisham, Southwark and North Kent. Times are getting tougher and to help them make a difference, you can help too by making a donation. Give a one-off donation or a monthly amount. Your support is crucial in raising vital funds for their work or by fundraising for them. If you are running, swimming, cycling, cooking, dancing, parachuting or anything else, Why not do it for the Millwall Community Trust? Interested? Then either email inquiries at millwallcommunity.org.uk or phone 0207 740 0503. I'll say that again. Email inquiries at millwallcommunity.org.uk or phone 0207 740 0503. Thanks if you can. I'm Gary Staff, and with me I have the No One Likes a Talking team of George Lampy, Ted Robinson and Stan Godwin. The work our trust does is second to none, and if you can't make if you can make a donation, it will go a long way to helping others in our community. Well, here is a look forward to our game ahead uh, at the weekend against Middlesbrough, but here's a few matters of interest for our Millwall fans. First off, what about sponsoring a player enjoying a great Executive Lounge VIP package with family or friends or just getting behind the club in a number of different ways and that includes business propositions from advertising to sponsorship. Just contact the helpful team of Andrew Stead, Edgar or Lucy in the commercial department to find out more. Good night everybody and my there you go. Do you know someone or do you think you have what it takes to join the Millwall Community Trust post-16 programme and play against other pro clubs. Get in touch with at Millwall MCT Academy on Instagram about training and trials. I'll say that again, at Millwall MCT Academy on Instagram about training and trials. And it's good night from me. We were all saddened to hear that Chris Bethel's wife, Eileen, passed away at the weekend on the 2nd of October. Our thoughts go out to his family. Rest in peace, Eileen, from all at our Millwall fan show. Don't forget you'll be able to listen to the No One Likes a Talking Team, bring reports from our games both home and away for both the Lions and the Lionesses and also updates on Millwall Community Matters on Maritime Radio, broadcasting on 96.5 FM. Additionally, links to us are on our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter social media sites and all popular podcast sites too. That's it from me. Thanks, guys. Let's keep it safe out there. And it's good night from me. Good night.